Hi everybody, my name is Ren Eisenberg and I want to talk to you today about how you can level up your CICD pipeline with AWS Smart Feature Flags. So let's start. So let's say that you've just deployed your new service, your new feature to your AWS account, your production account, and everything seems fine at the beginning. However, as time goes by, you realize that you have a problem. Something is not working. You need to revert the feature and you need to do it as soon as possible. What you're trying to do essentially is to change the behavior of your service. And this capability is a very important one, changing the, the behavior of your service. And I can think of another two cases where this is very useful. One case is canary deployments, uh, gradually deploying a, a new feature and changing the behavior of your service gradually, let's say, at the beginning for 10% of the customers, then 20% of the customers, all the way to 100. And during that time, if there's an error, you, you basically want to revert the behavior change automatically and quickly. And lastly, another use case is A-B testing. And in A-B testing, what you want to do is basically enable a feature, change the behavior of your service for a subset of customers. So let's say you have a premium set of customers that you want to change the, you want to enable them a premium set of features, right? So this is how you can do it with A-B testing. So now comes the question, how do you do that? How do you do all these three capabilities, uh, three capabilities? Well, the answer is obviously feature flags. And this is the main topic of, our, of my talk today. And I'm going to show you how you can do it on your AWS account. And we're going to use AWS app config and an SDK that I wrote and contributed to AWS Lambda Power Tools. So a little bit about myself. My name is Ron Eisenberg. I'm a principal software architect at CyberArk. I'm an AWS community builder and I maintain and write at my serverless blog website, runthebuilder.cloud, where I share my serverless uh, knowledge and experience. So what are we going to talk today or, or what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what are the requirements for uh, these capabilities. Um, we're going to discuss the functional and non-functional requirements for, for a solution. And since feature flags are configuration, we're going to discuss the configuration types, how we're going to implement the, the feature flags. We have dynamic and static configurations. I'm going to show you and in deep dive the AWS app config and Lambda Power Tools solution. We're going to talk about smart feature flags and what's smart about them. And lastly, we're going to discuss the best practices for using feature flags, all the, from development to, to testing to production. So let's start with the requirements. So if you recall, I said that we, you should, you want to have the ability to quickly roll back any feature, do it to change it, to change the behavior as soon as possible. We want to have the gradual deployment of features and an automatic rollback in case of an issue. And we want to have A-B testing. In addition, since this is an AWS solution only, we wanted to support both Lambda functions and containers. And another requirement that was important to my company, but I think it should be also important to you, is FriendDrop high certification. And lastly, there is a non-functional requirement. Um, any solution should be really easy to use and integrate into my service and my CACD pipeline. And I want it to be self-managed and resilient. I don't want to worry about backups or high availability of the feature flags solution. So feature flags are a type of configuration. And a configuration is essentially a collection of settings that influence and change the behavior of your service. And in this example, you can see a naive feature flags implementation that I wrote. I have a, a simple function. Um, I evaluate, I have a magic function that does evaluate feature flags for me. We're going to discuss what it does later on. And it returns me a Boolean. And then I have a simple if else. If the feature flag is enabled, I'm going to handle the new feature logic. Otherwise, I'm going to do the same old service logic and, and it will not change my behavior. So this is a very naive implementation, but it works. So let's discuss um, the configuration types. We have dynamic and static configurations that we can use for feature flags. 
what are what is static configuration so a static configuration uh, in this case i'm going to use the example of lambda functions because this is what i use but it can also be containers so in this case when i when i uh, upload my lambda function when my, my ci cd pipeline my service ci cd pipeline uploads a lambda function to the cloud to my account it bundles my handler code with uh, environment vol it defines the envir environment variables and also it can define it can bundle the in the zip static configuration files give it just json files so they are part of the zip file that goes to aws and it's deployed and if i want to make a change to the to the to the static configuration i just need to run the CSCD pipeline again and go through all the gates and the tests etc to go to the to build the zip file and deploy it to my production account dynamic on the other hand are a bit different so i still have my service CSCD pipeline i still create my lambda files and my lambda zip file and i deploy it to aws however the lambda does not have the configuration statically in its zip file. It uses an API call to fetch the configuration from an external resource, some configuration resource that is deployed by another CI/CD pipeline, a dedicated CI/CD pipeline just for the configuration. Okay, so in this case, if I want to make a change to the the lambda behavior, all I need to do is deploy the configuration CI/CD pipeline, which is much quicker. It has less tests and last resources to deploy and it's much quicker and then when the lambda checks for the new configuration it's going to get the new values and it's going to change the behavior accordingly so let's sum it out sum it up static versus dynamic so static again we're reading the configuration from the bundled resources the json files in the zip or environment variables in dynamic we're using an api call in static, if you want to make a change, you need to run rerun the service CI/CD pipeline. And in the dynamic, we need to run the configuration CI/CD pipeline, which is quicker. We do have the complexity in dynamic of another pipeline to manage, but since it it allows for really quick changes in service behavior, this is our winner. We're gonna use dynamic configuration for our feature flags implementation. So now that we understand how to do the feature flags, um, how to implement them, let's go over the solution. We're gonna use a JSON configuration file as part of the development stage. We're gonna deploy it to AWS App Config with its own CSCD pipeline. Like we said, it's a dynamics yeah, configuration file, configuration. And then we're gonna use the SDK in Lambda Power Tools for feature flags to evaluate in runtime and get the feature flags from AWS app config. So this is a sample JSON file with just a premium features where the default value is false. The feature is disabled by default in this case. Now let's gonna now we're we're gonna use we're gonna show again, bring up the dynamic uh, diagram from before. And here you can see that now we're deploying a JSON file that, that is translated into an AWS app config configuration resource. And my Lambda is gonna check new configuration from app config and fetch the and fetch the values in runtime with an API call. So why did I choose AWS app config? What, what's so great about it? Okay. So first of all, it's an AWS integrated service. I don't need to add another third-party service outside of AWS account. I don't need to have any traffic going outside my account, so it's more secured. Uh, I don't need to bring into uh, to go into the process of security evaluations and all sorts all all those uh, corporate uh, processes that go into when, when you're adding third-party integrations. It's part of AWS, and I can just use it. It's one of the few solutions, if not the only one, I believe, that has FedRAMP high certification for feature flags. It's fully managed, so I don't need to care about backups and high availability. It's always there, it's always working. It has a great feature for validating JSON schemas, so I can define a schema for my configuration. So if somebody 
tries to upload a malformed or some problematic schema, it will just fail the config, it fail the deployment, and my my uh, environment will, will be just fine. And it has deployment strategies. So when you deploy configuration, you can choose canary deployments, if, which, if you recall, is one of our functional requirements. So it has it out of the box. So it's great. I can you I can do canary deployments, and define. <clears throat> AWS CloudWatch alarms that if they trigger during the Canary deployments, I'm going to have the automatic rollback and go back to the previous version of my configuration. So on and all, it has great features that answer many of my requirements. So this is how the console looks like. In AppConfig, you need to define an application. An application can be just um, your microservice or service, in this case, it's called a test service. And each application has an environment. And environment can be dev, test, production, etc. And each environment has the configuration, which on the bottom right, you can see it has a version, it has a name on the left, and it has a deployment status if you chose Canary deployments. So now that we know how to deploy the configuration, you were going to use app config, dynamic pipeline. Let's talk about the evaluation of the function of the feature flags in runtime. We're going to use AWS Lambda Power Tools. We're going to use the <clears throat> we're going to use Python, uh, which is what I developed. Uh, but it's a very simple solution, so you can really write it in your own language of choice. We're using here AWS APIs and some Python code. Code. So the examples are going to be Python since the solution is Python based. So for those who don't know, AWS Lambda Power Tools is an amazing repository. It basically defines all the best practices for AWS Lambda, logging, tracing, input validation, and feature flags are defined, and you can use their utilities to do that. It has over one million downloads per month, so it's very uh, it's very um, popular. And we're going to use the feature flags utility, which I designed and contributed to AWS Lambda Power Tools. And what it essentially does, it fetches configurations from app config. It stores it in, 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 in an in-memory cache. It evaluates the feature flags value for you. And it has something very interesting. It has a support for regular and smart feature flags. And I'm going to discuss smart feature flag later on. And just to clarify, it's not just for a Lambda function, even though the, the name says Lambda. You can use it also in containers. So let's go back to the simple, <clears throat> simple uh, use case. We have a regular feature flag, a 10% of campaign. And the default value is going to be, let's say the, the feature is enabled by default. And this is how we're get, you're going to use the code. In line three, we're going to define the app config configuration, the environment, the application, and the configuration name. In line nine, we're going to define <clears throat> the, the instance of our SDK with the in-memory cache. We're going to initialize it. And then in line 12, we're going to evaluate, right? This is the magic function. We're going to evaluate the feature flag 10% off, and we're going to get a Boolean value back, apply discount. And then you can see the naive implementation again in line 15. If apply discount, change the behavior, do something new. Otherwise, do the, the old uh, behavior. And something important to note that in line 13, I'm using the default value equals false. Why is that? Well, what if somebody deployed the new configuration and just removed the feature 10% of campaign from the configuration? I don't want my 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 code, my lambda my lambda function to crash, so I'm gonna have a fallback, a default value. So in case it doesn't find the the config the feature flag in the configuration, it's gonna have a default value. So now we're gonna I'm gonna show you smart feature flags, which are very very cool. First of all, they enable you A/B testing, which is the final uh, requirement that we didn't answer yet. So how does it do that? Basically, the feature flags will change value according to your input. You have a context input that you provide, and it has a rule engine 
uh, that checks if the rule matches. And if they do, they return the value that the rule uh, defines. So you can have for one input, the value can be the, the feature flags value can be false. But if you provide a different value input, it can be true. So one configuration and different behavior, and it allows you to do A-B testing. And I'm going to show you how in a second. So let's take a look at this sample configuration. Let's assume that we have on the left our input event to our Lambda. We have usernames, and each user has a tier. In this case, the username is um, the, the tier is premium, but it can also be a standard. And on the right, we can see the configuration that we have. In line 17, we have the regular feature flag. And in line 2, we have the smart feature flag. So again, it has a different value of false in line 3. But then it has the smart rule engines. It has the rules in line 4 defined. It has one rule. It says customer tier, tier equals premium. And if, it's the, if the customer tier is premium, then line six says then the feature flag is going to be true, right? And in order for the rule to match, all the conditions need to, to apply, need to match, need to, to value it true. So here we have a set of conditions, just one. And it means that the tier, which is the key in, in the input, needs to have a value of premium. And it needs to, um, the, the key tier needs to equal to the uh, value premium. Right, because the action is equals, so tier and value and and the value need to to be equal. Um, so let, let's see it here in this example. So the same code applies here; it's the same thing as we had before, but we have the context in line thirteen, where we were building the the input context. So we have the key tier, and then we have the value. It can be standard or premium. So if you recall. If tier, the key, is going to be standard, then the feature flag is going to be, the rule does not match, it's going to be default false. If tier has a value of premium, right, equals premium, then the rule is going to match. And the has premium features in line 17 is going to be true. So in line 17, we just call the same evaluate function, but we provide the optional context. Okay, so then, if it's if it's true if the prim, if it's premium tier, line 19 is gonna trigger and we're gonna enable the premium features. Otherwise, we're gonna for another user we're gonna have different uh, behavior. So that way you can do A/B testing between different users with the same configuration. And there are all, there are over 10 actions that you can use. Uh, you can see more in the website. You have starts with key in value, et cetera, et cetera, other 10 actions. And also you have non-Boolean feature flags. You can use um, any basic JSON, any valid JSON value it can be a list of strings, integers, etc. In this case, it's gonna, um, I'm using a list of strings where I want the premium tier to have special actions that I do on their account, like remove limits and remove ads. But the default for the non-premium users is going to be no special action is going to be applied. So you can use this for all sorts of sample rules. You can enable it for a specific customer, maybe an admin of a customer, apply discount for specific types of products, offer free shipping if the cost is higher than some number. You can have so many possibilities here, and it's very flexible. So like I said, it's, we're going to use it for A-B testing, and you can have different user experiences for different users with just one single configuration, which does not change. So if you recall, I've mentioned that there is an in-memory cache. Um, why is that important? Because each call to AWS app config to fetch configuration costs money, and we want to save some money. So it's uh, the in-memory cache says that if the cache does not expire, we do not fetch the new configuration and we save money. And you can define what number of seconds you want to have. And it's important, <clears throat> it's important to remember that it's a balance between cost saving and being uh, and having the, the service change its behavior as soon as possible. Because if the cache doesn't expire, the service will not fetch a new configuration.
And by the way, I'm adding very soon, hopefully this month, I'm adding time-based rules where you can enable rules and feature flags at the specific uh, times, enable features at specific duration for a specific duration, or enable them during specific days. And now, lastly, we're going to discuss the feature flags best practices that are we're going to use across all the stages of our pipeline of our development from the build to the testing to deployment and production so in my eyes the development team needs to own the process from start to end they need to config they need to write the configuration json files they need to write the code that evaluates and to, that evaluates it and, and behaves accordingly. And they need to start where the, where the features are enabled in test and dev accounts, but disabled in production. And when it comes to tests, well, we're going to use mocks. We're going to mock the configuration in our tests so we have better control on the outcome. And Obviously, we're going to mock the feature uh, when it's enabled and tested all the side effects and everything is working just fine. But it's very important to mock the feature as also disabled because sometimes you don't have a simple if statement if feature is enabled, do something. Sometimes it's more complicated and it's really important that that part of logic is tested. We want to assert that the logic the function that handles the, the feature flag when it is enabled does not run when the feature is actually disabled. We actually had a bug where our feature was marked as false, but due to a bug in the if statement, it was a complicated one, the feature actually ran and we had some problem in production. So it's very important to test that. And then once you, you decide that the feature is stable in the non-production environments, you can go ahead and, and, and run a deployment strategy to production and use Canary deployments. Epcofing has, um, has, has you covered for that. And you, can, you should define CloudWatch alarms uh, on errors for your service. So you can auto-revert, um, <coughs> sorry, you can auto-revert your, your configuration if there's an error. Now, what happens if for some reason, at some later time, you do have some errors in your feature, right? Things that you didn't find in the tests. Well, you should disable the feature as soon as possible and run the configuration CACD pipeline again. You should update the tests and, and add the missing use cases and just do um, the, the whole thing again, just deploy and re-release again. And I suggest that you also do a retro meeting where you identify why the how how come you missed those use cases in the test how come you had this uh, bug in production and eventually you need to retire the feature flags and why you should do that well because feature flags they add code complexity you have more tests around it you have more mocks you have more if statement and branching in your code it's more complicated so at some point we want to retire the features and remove the code how do we do that? How do we do that? We're meeting once a month, when, and then we can discuss and select candidates for, for removal, for feature flags to remove. And then all we need to do is just run the configuration CICD pipeline again and monitor that everything is okay. How do we select candidates for, the, for removal? Well, if the feature has been enabled to all the customers for several weeks and it's been stable, there are no bugs around it, the feedback of the customers has been very positive and you don't have any open issues. And if you don't expect any change, changes in the code around that area, then you should totally just retire the feature and make your code simpler. So let's sum it all up. Uh, we created feature flags, smart and regular. We deployed app config. We used Lambda Power Tools to fetch and evaluate the configuration feature flag. We had Canary deployments. We learned how to do A-B testing. And we learned how to do uh, what are the feature flags best practices uh, in the development stages all the way to production. So thank you very much. That's been my talk. And you can follow me on my Twitter and my LinkedIn. And check out my website, roundthebuilder.cloud, where I talk about all things serverless. Thank you very much. And have a good day.